Not really as a surprise. Hello, and thank you for having me. Not really as a surprise, um, because after the sentence and the verdict was actually issued, uh, we were expecting her release. Her family was expecting her release in the next few weeks to, to, to the next two months. Um, but it is, that is to say that, the, um, you know, the Saudi ju uh, justice system operates in a very opaque way. So Lujain herself said that she wasn't made aware of her release until this very same day she was released. So yes, the expectation was there. We have been seeing some positive signs um, going on in Saudi uh, Arabia in, in in, uh, in recent days, I would say, uh, epitomized, obviously, by the release of Lujin. Tell us more about why she was jailed in the first place. So Lujin and a number of other women and men have been campaigning for years, and as you said, for decades even, um, with, uh, with regards to a number of these women, for greater women's rights, so advocating for change. One of the, one of the rights that they had been advocating for was the right to drive. Um, Lujin had already been jailed uh, a few years ago uh, for a certain period of time because she had tried to advocate for the right to drive. Now, let us be, let us, let me remind, um, our audience here that when the Saudi authorities decided to lift the ban on driving, which was touted in front of the international community as one of the great um, symbols and signs of Saudi's, uh, you know, more progressive uh, overtures and these social reforms, barely one month before that, the authorities had locked up um, a number of these women rights defenders, men and women, uh, presumably to stop them from speaking uh, when these decisions would be issued and presumably also to just get, take the credit as authorities and signaling that these reforms will happen only at the pace of the authorities but at the price of Lujain and other individuals and activists who have been locked up for these you know the past three years for Lujain and suffering sexual harassment and torture that happened during the time of their detention. Have there been any, any changes to women's rights during Lujain's detention? Yes, so certainly Saudi Arabia is not the same country uh, that she's going to find Lujain once she's out uh, as compared to the country she went into when she was blocked, uh, when she was uh, when she was arrested and detained. One of the, you know, one of the most visible um, reforms is the right of women to drive. There has been a slew of um, social reforms, not so much human rights reforms, and individuals keep, uh, you know, paying the price for expressing their views um, in a peaceful way, there are, you know, dozens of prisoners of conscience still detained um, by the Saudi authorities. Uh, but certainly, uh, the, the 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 society is a different one today um, uh, for uh, which for Lujain. Uh, now, yeah. Yes. What has been Lujain's and her supporters' responses to her release? So her family held a press conference yesterday basically to give the details of her release. And they have been saying one thing repeatedly, which is Lujain is not free. She was released, but she's still released on conditionality. So she is still under probation. She is under travel ban. Her parents are under travel ban for a period of five years. She is not allowed to be, um, she's under sanctions and all sorts of restrictions, which would include her ability to speak out and to be active and to conduct her human rights work. So they have released her, but at the same time, they're still keeping her mom and, um, uh, uh, you know, under the threat of further prosecution. And this is happening while at the same time, time in parallel, she is also pressing charges for investigations into the torture that she was subjected to. And this is an ongoing case. Uh, right now, the prosecution is just shifting the blame or the, the burden of uh, presenting evidence of torture onto her, um, you know, which defies all, all rules of invest effective investigations into claims of torture. So that is her situation today. Meanwhile, what she would like to advocate for is, I understand, the abolition of the guardianship system. Can you explain a little bit about that and whether you're hopeful of any progress on her part? Absolutely. So the guardianship system is a patriarchal 
um, system that governs every single major decision in the life of a woman in Saudi Arabia. She needs to seek permission from a legal male guardian, and that male guardian could be a man, uh, could be her son, if her if her husband is uh, you know is uh, if she is a widower, so it could be a man younger than her, who dictates and. Uh, you know, e either restricts or um, gives permission to decisions of child custody, of marriage, divorce, uh, obtaining, uh, starting to work, going to university, getting married. So this guardianship system, you know, there have been a number of reforms in the past few months that have, to some extent, dismantled um, the system. So allowing greater freedoms for women. And these have, of course, these reforms have been much welcomed. Now, it is difficult for us to assess what the situation of the implementation of these reforms are on the ground. Let us remember that Saudi Arabia remains a country that does not allow access to independent human rights monitors. So Amnesty hasn't been able to go on the ground in a number of years. Um, as, and so it is difficult to, um, to assess assess the implementation of these reforms. Okay, well, we will watch uh, with interest and also follow Lujain's case closely. Lynn Malouf, thank you so much. Thank you.